Hello everybody. Uh, today's message might not be a prophetic word for you, but it's God's message today for a lot of people in the body of Christ. As I know, um, for far too long, some evil practice has been going on in the body of Christ covertly um, and, and in some instances recently openly so I want to address that and pray for that we should all join hands and and pray against such things in spirit uh, however I'll tell you about the prayer as well as far as these kind of acts are concerned uh, after I, I talk about it a little bit so I want to start reading a passage of scripture from 1st Corinthians chapter 6 verses 12 to 20 it reads all things are lawful for me but not all things are helpful all things are lawful for me but I will not be dominated by anything so you shall not be slave you should not be a slave to anyone or anything food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for, for food and God will destroy both one and the other the body is not meant for sexual immorality that is clear, cl clear crystal it can't be any clearer than that but for the Lord the body is not meant for sexual immorality but for the Lord and the Lord for the body and God raised the Lord and will also raise us up by his power do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute never bear in mind today's prostitutes are not just females they're male too and you know as I say things against uh, females sometimes uh, for today's generation uh, because we've been so much corrupted by the media and uh, so much uh, brainwashed that we don't even understand uh, every gender has its own place yes equality is good but there are certain things that certain genders can and should do and certain genders shouldn't and, and, and really can't but they're forcing themselves or, or stretching themselves to do those things to make themselves so-called equal uh, let's not uh, digress from the main subject of this this uh, message and get back to the, the scripture so uh, then so shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute never or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with hair so you become one body with hair my brother with that prostitute or with those prostitutes you've joined yourself it's time to separate yourself and cleanse yourself now let me read on uh, for as it is written the two will become one flesh but he who is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him flee from sexual immorality every other sin a person commits is outside the body but the sexual immorality person sins against his own body or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you whom you have from God you are not your own you're not your own you belong to God for you were bought with a price so glorify God in your body use your body sing to the Lord use your body and glorify God 
not pleasing prostitutes and gratifying your sinful nature put to death that body is already put to death on the cross of Calvary if you are a Christian or if you at least think you're a Christian because I don't believe personally I don't believe I know there are a lot of pastors preachers and uh, bishops even um, clergymen they all um, wash it down they don't want to teach you these things they don't want to talk about these things because it's all politically incorrect and I, as I've said before I don't have any boundaries as far as the word of con word of God is concerned I say as is it as, is, as it is and as it is written and I'm not gonna wash it down I'm not gonna water it down and um, I know there are lots of uh, leaders church leaders who water it down and just say well you know uh, this person has been born that way you're not born that way you might not know how you've got there but you're not born that way nobody's born that way you could be born a eunuch and that is a different thing that Jesus talks about but that doesn't mean gay that doesn't mean lesbian they just have no interest in anything but anyway let's not again let's not get into the nitty-gritty um, the Word of God is clear about these things there are numerous scriptures verses about sexual immorality it goes into details and it tells you uh, what is wrong and, and what you shouldn't do another verse of scripture from the Old Testament so um, you don't say oh, this is New Testament or that te Old Testament is is in both Leviticus 20 13 if a man has sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman both of them have done what is detestable they are to be put to death their body they their blood will be on their own heads their blood will be on their own heads and this was the Old Testament they would put those kind of people to death of course we don't do that now uh, we are in the New Testament and, and, and I'm not suggesting we should do but um, there's a way out and I'll tell you what and this is not just about men because it's all referring to man if a man has sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman uh, today's generation do all sorts of things and it goes on um, into other um, creatures animals nowadays with robots objects and, and all that is sin and all that is against the Word of God there are Christians or those who claim they're Christians as I said as far as I'm concerned if you are practicing these evil deeds in your life you're not a Christian you might think you're a Christian you might have been raised by a Christian family you might even go and attend church services you might read your Bible you might know your Bible back to the front and you might know a lot more scriptures than I do probably but that doesn't make you a Christian Jesus says unless you're born again you have no room in the kingdom of heaven you should not enter the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of God is no place for such people who practice these detestable acts uh, why do I believe that uh, because once you're born again you're a new creation you have the Holy Spirit in you and the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you in all things in your life and so 
God also takes away the evil desires from you and puts in the holy desires in your heart so you will not even want and desire those things you have put to death your old body now you're raised again like I just read as the Lord raises Christ he also raises up raise us up uh, so you are a new creation you're born again basically literally and you're a new person your old deeds have died you are dead to your sins and now you're new you're a new person in Christ following and submitting yourself to the Lord and to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will lead you your, the desires of your your heart will change it might not be an immediate thing in some people it is immediately they change heart and they have no desire whatsoever for the things that they used to do the evil or sinful things that they used to do but uh, in some people it might be a gradual development gradual growth uh, spiritual growth and as they grow spiritually they learn more maybe they don't know like I said at the beginning they might not know about these things and or they might be brainwashed about these things uh, in their own circle in their own family and friends and relationships whatever they have they might have been corrupted that way so it might take a while before they are actually mature in the spirit to know that what they're doing and the Holy Spirit will do that because if you are really that naive and you don't know anything but you are really genuinely seeking God and following the leading of the Holy Spirit then the Holy Spirit will lead you out of all those sinful areas of your life and he will show you that this is wrong and you have to step away from those kind of things and uh, he will convict you of those sins and he will give you the power to overcome those temptations uh, this video might be the leading of the Holy Spirit for you or guiding or teaching of the Holy Spirit for you to tell you what you've been doing is sinful you might say well you know what I, I am addicted to this I, I, I just can't get away from it and I know there are lots of like I said there are lots of Christians or at least again I say I keep saying that those who claim they're Christians because I don't believe they actually they, they might want to be Christians but they haven't actually committed they haven't actually had a change of heart because they haven't had a true conviction in their hearts unless you have that conviction unless you're actually born again and filled with the Holy Spirit you, you cannot call yourself a Christian and when you do that then you won't want to do those kind of things that you used to do you don't want them anymore they're not they're not pleasing to you anymore they're not you don't desire those things anymore you desire other things that you never desired before so you might say well you know I, I want to do this I want to stop doing those things and I want to be born again but I'm kind of entangled I feel addicted to this but if you if you're addicted to this the first step is to admit that you're addicted to this because lots of people they deny that they don't want to know that they're addicted if you're addicted to pornography and you, you have to watch that and, and some of you watch it with your wife or your husband then you need to understand this is sinful you need to understand that you have a problem if you didn't have a problem you wouldn't need a video to arouse you you wouldn't need a video to change the atmosphere for you you wouldn't need that
Adam and Eve didn't need that. Think about it. Abraham and Sarah didn't need that. At that old age. So I tell you, my brother and sisters, I, I, I say this out of love. I don't want to condemn you. I take it you are not mature enough or you haven't been mature enough to understand these things and have a change of heart. You haven't had enough teachings to be convicted of your sins. If you haven't heard, you wouldn't know. I'm here to let you hear and know that these are evil practices and you need to stop. Now, we can sit here and pray for you forever. Nothing will change unless you have a change of heart and that is only up to you. The same way a person suddenly has a change of heart and commits himself or herself to the Lord and get baptized and become the follower of Christ in all their lives. Following Christ is not a one day a week job. It's a 24-7 job. It's a commitment. It's a change of lifestyle. It's a change of behavior. It's a change of uh, thought life. Everything. There is no break. There is no holidays. There is no, um, you know, break, basically. It's, it's, it's God, God has no break. God is 24-7. You can't take a day off. You can't say, well, God, can you just look away from me for just today? There is no such thing. It's 24 seven, literally. So you have to have that commitment. You have to have that conviction to start with in your heart. Know in your heart and in your mind that what you've been doing is wrong. And I showed you the scriptures and I read them. There are numerous scriptures about these things. I'm not going to bore you to death about those things and read them because there is, there is a lot. I, I just picked a couple of those and I'm going to read another one to tell you how you can be free. As I said, the only way you can be free, the first step is to acknowledge that this is a sin because like I said, there is a lot of people who do these things and they just think what's wrong with it. I am happy with it. And the other person is happy with it. So what's wrong? And there's a lot wrong with it, my brother or sister. There's a lot wrong with it. You are joining your body with a prostitute or series of prostitutes. Your body doesn't belong to you but the Lord. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You understand? Temple of the Holy Spirit has to be holy. You have been set apart to be holy, sanctified. Not a room for trash. It's not a trash can. Your body is not a trash can. Temple of the Holy Spirit. Any sexual relationship outside marriage, that is, apart from the one you're married to, and that person you're married to has to be an opposite sex, human opposite sex. So if you're a man, you have to be married to a, to a woman. If you're a woman, you have to be married to a man and not objects not man-made humanoids or robots or any kind of um, man-made stuff 
that is out that is marriage now if you're married outside that marriage any sexual relationship outside that apart from that is sin acknowledge that ask God to convict you because I can only be a messenger and give you the message of God give you what God has already said about these things you have to have a change of heart make a commitment it's not difficult because God will raise you up as he raised Christ from the dead he will raise you up and give you power equip you to overcome those temptations equip you that you will not even have any desire for those kind of things Galatians 5 verses 16 to 26 reads so I say walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh and I say the same thing to you walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the sin sinful desires of the flesh if you follow the Spirit the leading of the Spirit the Holy Spirit you will automatically not gratify the desires of your flesh so that is the way out for the flesh craves what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh they're opposed to each other so that you do not what you do not do what you want but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law you understand if you are led by the spirit you're not under the law the same as uh, many things that Jesus did and his disciples did but they were against the law of the um, Torah and and that is why Pharisees and Sadducees were trying to trap him trap Jesus and corner him and, and condemn them but they were above the law like picking corns on the Sabbath and, and, and those kind of things that they according to the law they, sh they, were, they were not supposed to do but as far as sinful desires of the flesh you will not fulfill them you will not even desire those things if you're led by the Holy Spirit the acts now the acts of the flesh are obvious so this is obvious to them then then at least it was obvious now we're so much corrupted in and outside the church that we don't even know what is sin what is not sin we have to have conferences and meetings to discuss whether this is a sin or not well when it's clearly stated in black and white in the Bible that these are acts of the flesh these are sins the acts of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality impurity and debauchery idolatry and sorcery hatred discord jealousy and rage rivalries divisions factions and envy drunkenness orgies and the like none of that none of those are happening in our today's society are they <laughs> I warn you as I did before and I did the same I warn you now as I did before that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God but the fruit of the Spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control 
against such against such things there is no law self-control you have the self-control and I talked about this in another live session and I prayed again uh, for people who were struggling with their addictions and, and this is another addiction it's the same it's similar it doesn't have to be addiction doesn't have to be some sort of substance that you smoke or, or, or you drink and this an addiction an evil addiction your self-control is not there for decoration it's there for you to use and this is the spirit of the the, the fruit of the spirit this is air fruit of the spirit self-control so it, as I said once you're born again and filled with the Holy, the Holy Spirit you will have that self-control to control you from any kind of evil temptations God will make ways and open a way to free, flee from any sin any sin now continuing on 24 verse 24 says those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires just as I just as I explained you're dead to sin you died you are dead your body is dead not literally dead but dead to sin you have no desire for those kind of things you have a desire to have sex with your own husband or wife I, I, I nearly said partner I hate that word but they use it so much in the society that it's become like part of their vocabulary and uh, because I talk a lot to the secular people and you know sometimes you feel like they make you feel like you're offending them when you say your husband your wife when they're only partners you know as far as I'm concerned if you're living with someone you're married to that person now that person could be a prostitute that person could be actually your wife that person could be your partner but you're married marriage doesn't mean a piece of certificate a piece of paper marriage is made in hearts and it's a commitment it's an open public commitment so the, the reason that I see that people don't want that commitment that public announcement is because they want to walk away easily without any kind of entanglement without any kind of um, obligations and commitments we, they don't they don't just want to easily walk away without having to lose anything without having to you know go through any kind of legal paperwork or anything the paperwork the legal legality is there just to make you feel bound by that but but what binds me as a Christian is my commitment not that piece of paper the piece of paper means nothing to me what means something to me is what I've committed what I've um, promised to my wife and um, the the oath that I've made before God and before people that is my commitment not not a piece of paper is not binding anyone really it's just there to make people to come and announce it publicly so they feel obliged but as a Christian you shouldn't even have to be forced to do that you should want to do that you should want to make it public and announce it and have as many certificates as uh, they can give you 
But if you're married, if you're living together, you're married. Like I said, Abraham and Sarah didn't have certificates. Adam and Eve didn't have any certificate, but they were married. Mary and Joseph didn't have a certificate, but they were married. Now, I'm not trying to give a license to people to sin. I'm actually, on the contrary, I'm trying to stop people from sinning. This is not a license to people to just go and say, okay, now we can just live together. No, 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 that, that, that doesn't mean that. You, you completely misunderstood me. You need to go and rewind this video and watch it again and listen to what I said. If you are committed in mind, soul, heart to a person to be their wife or husband and live together and do your marital duties because we all have our own parts and it is in the scripture as well wives should submit to their husbands and husbands should love their wives as Christ did his body the church uh, if we do all those things this is not this is just a part of it it goes on into details then you're married but because we are living in a society that we need papers everywhere we go then yes we have to make it announced and we have to make it public and we also need to make it public because uh, again like I said that gives no license basically to other people who can sneak away and make them I claim that they're still Christian and they uh, they want to live together and call it marriage because they don't want the paperwork and they don't want the commitment that is <laughs> defeating the, the, the purpose the purpose is to make the commitment that is the objective of it if you don't want if you want to avoid and elude the the core essence of marriage which is the commitment then you're not married you're living in sin you might be partners and you might be in your heart feeling or thinking or even saying that you're committed but you're not, you haven't actually shown that you're committed like I said if you are really committed then you would have no objections to make it public and go through the um, paperwork and legality and have the paper let's not again digress uh, we're going into uh, marriage subject of marriage which is another video I had on marriage and what is marriage and what you should do and all that uh, and, and, and it relates to love which is again um, another video I have had you know a long time ago uh, published it goes into further details of love what is love according to the Bible not according to our society now reading on those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires since we live by the Spirit let us walk in step with the spirit let us not become conceited provoking and envying one another don't provoke and envy one another walk by the spirit walk in step with the spirit and you shall not fulfill the desires of your flesh you have been expecting things in your marital relationship from your wife or your husband that are not realistic the reason you do this is because I'm afraid you've been watching too many Hollywood movies or porns what you watch there is a fantasy 
It has no resemblance of reality. That is why you turn to prostitutes because they can mimic the Hollywood movies, actresses, porn star actresses and actors and you love them because that has been pumped into your brain so much that you think that is reality and your wife or your husband is sick or has a problem or you have a problem or you don't know what's, what's the problem or you're confused you have no problem your wife doesn't have a problem your problem is in your brain that you have been believing a lie a big big lie that doesn't exist it doesn't exist simply it doesn't exist change your mentality come to reality understand that you are the real one your wife is the real one and there is no problem with you the problem is in your head that you believe or you have been believing a big lie promoted by the giants giants who want you addicted to them because they make money out of people like you Don't turn your wife to a prostitute. Don't turn your husband to a male prostitute. And don't turn to prostitutes because you feel unsatisfied. Because you've been expecting an unrealistic expectation. Do you really like your wife to pretend to you something that's not real? Will you enjoy that? When you fully know that is a lie and she's only pretending. Or you, uh, as a woman, would you love your husband to lie and pretend something that you know full well it's a lie it's only a pretense to make you happy you wouldn't want that would you you want everything real you want to enjoy as it is you want to enjoy the reality not a show Let me close here with a prayer for you but as I said you have to have a conviction of heart by God and I pray that the Lord God will convict you in your heart that what you've been doing what you've been watching what you've been believing is a sin it's a big lie and you have to stop believing that and you have to stop watching those things you have to stop expecting those things from your other half ask God to fulfill the desires of your heart Put the holy desires in your heart. Take away the ungodly and unholy desires out of your heart and fill you with the Holy Spirit. I ask you that he may fill you with the Holy Spirit and give you the desires of your heart which are all holy. I ask God that he may grant you wisdom, knowledge, heavenly wisdom heavenly knowledge earthly wisdom and earthly knowledge so you know the truth 
and discern the spirits and know and realize what you've been believing and what you've been expecting it's not the reality and cannot happen unless you keep going on and believing a lie and making your other half pretend and be a lie or be part of a lie a big lie I ask that God give you that spirit of discernment so you can discern the spirits you can have sharpened and strengthened conscience and self-control that you can easily walk away and realize that you're dead to sin you're a new creation and you're born in Christ you are body of you're part of the body of Christ you're in the body of Christ you belong to God and you now walk by the Spirit you submit yourself to the Lord and the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will guide you through through life may the Lord be with you strengthen you and give you the spirit of wisdom and discernment in Jesus name amen and amen I hope you enjoyed this I hope I helped some people if you have let me know yeah. and let us rejoice all together that this video has helped somebody and if you know someone who is struggling in your circle then send this video to them this might be a message directly to them from God Don't miss this opportunity if you've been watching this video on truly majestic channel uh, please go to our own ministry channel which is in the description of this video uh, as I've said before in other videos I have to keep saying this because um, finding that YouTube channel just by searching prophetic word uh, is almost impossible uh, because of what the powers have done to our channel and so if you just go directly please to the link in the description then you can find us there and subscribe so you can see all my videos because sometimes I don't put all the videos here at the moment recently we've been just sharing all the videos here but eventually we want to uh, migrate everything to just one channel so if you like in this video please share and comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions please go ahead god bless you i'll see you again soon goodbye